Welcome, my name is Juan. This chapter is called It's a Network. In this chapter we will learn how to assemble all the elements we have been using together in a functioning network that can be maintained among other th things shown here. With small networks, the design of the network is usually simple. The number and type of devices of the network are significantly reduced compared to that of a larger network. <clears throat> the network topologies for small networks typically involve a single router and one or more switches. Small networks may also have wireless access points, possibly built in their, into the router, and IP phones. As for connection to the internet, normally a small network has a single one connection provided by DSL ca cable or an Ethernet connection. One of the first designs considerations when implementing a small network is the type of internet devices to use to support the network. When selecting, when selecting the type of internet devices, there is a number of factors that need to be considered. Cost. Cost is a typically one of the most important factors when selecting equipment for a small business network. The cost of a switch or router is determined by its capacity and features. The expense of cable runs required to connect every device on the network must also be considered. All uh, speed and types of ports interface. Choose the number of and type of ports on a router or switch is critical decision. Question to be asked include do we order just enough ports for today's needs or we, do we consider world requ requirements? Do we require a mixture of UTP speeds and do we require both UTP and fire ports? Expandability. Networking devices came in both fixed and modular physical configurations. Fixed configurations have a specific number and type of ports or interface. Modular devices have expansion slots that provide the flexibility to add new models and require requirements evolve. Operating si system features and services. Depending on the version of the operating system, a network device <coughs> can support certain features and services such as security, QoS, BOLP, layer 3 switching, NAT, DHCP. IP addressing for a small network. The IP addressing scheme should be planned, documented, and maintained based on the type of device receiving the addresses. Administrators are better able to control access to resources on the network based on an IP address when a deterministic IP addressing scheme is used. If a server has a random address assigned, blocking access to, his, to this address is difficult and clients may not be able to locate the this resource. Redundancy in the small network. It's always good to have a backup plan. For example, in the server, in the server farm, if one server fails, another is there to handle the customer request. A fail of the network can be very costly. In order to maintain a high degree of reliability, redundancy is required in a network design. Small networks typically provide a single exit point towards the internet via one or more default gateways. With one router in a topology, the only redundancy in the term of layer 3 paths is enabled by utilizing more than one inside Ethernet interface on the router. However, if the router fails, the entire network loses connectivity to the internet. For this reason, it's, it may be advisable for a small business to pay for a least cost option account with a second service provider for backup. Some steps to follow desi uh, while designing a small network. Step 1. Secure file and mail service in a centralized location. Step 2. Protect the location from unauthorized access by implementing physical and logical security measures. Step 3. Create redundancy in the server farm that ensures if one ser device fails, files are not lost. Step 4. Configure redundant paths, paths to the servers. In a network, you can prioritize traffic depending on your needs. A good network design will cl classify traffic carefully according to priority. 
For instance, in the diagram we can see that voice traffic is the highest priority probably because it's in an office environment and they depend on that for a good communication. Common applications in a small network. Network application. Applications are the software programs used to communicate over the network. Some end user application and network aware meaning that they implement application layer protocols and are able to communicate directly with the lower layers of the protocol stack. Email clients and web browser are example of this type of, of application. Application layer services. Other programs may need the assistance of application layer services to use network resources, like file transfer or network print spooling. Different types of data, whether text, graphics, or video, require different network services to ensure that they are properly prepared for processing by the, by the function occurring by the at the lower layers of the OSI model. Some common network protocols include DNS server, telnet, e email server, DHCP server, web server, FTP server. Uh, in this pro each protocol defines processes on either end of a communication session, types of messages, syntax of the messages, meaning of the inf in informational fields, how messages are sent and the expected response, interaction with the lower layers. The real-time applications for a small network. To transport streaming media effectively the, net effectively, the network must be able to support applications that require delay sensitivity delivery. Real-time transport protocol, RTP, and real-time transport control protocol, RTCP, are two protocols that support this requirement. RTP and RTCP enable control and scalability of the network resources by allowing quality of service QoS mechanism to be incorporated. These QoS mechanism, mechanisms provide valuable tools for minimizing latency uses for real-time streaming applications, such as video conference. Monitoring, monitoring and troubleshooting. Growth is a natural process for many small businesses, and their network must grow accordingly. To scale a network, several elements are required. First, network documentation, physical and logical topology, device inventory, list of devices that are used and, comp and comprise the network, budget, itemized IT budget including fiscal year equipment purchase budget, traffic analysis, protocols, application and service and their respective traffic requirements should be documented. We need to know all this and plenty of things more so we can grow the network correctly to our needs. And the threats to network security. Information theft. Breaking into a computer to obtain confidential information. Information that can be used or sold for various purposes. Data loss or manipulation. Breaking into a computer to destroy or alter data records. Identity theft. A form of information theft where personal information is stolen for the purpose of taking over someone's identity. Using this information, an individual can obtain legal documents, apply for credit, and make unauthorized online purchases. Disruption of services. <coughs> pre pre preventing legitimate users from accessing service to which they should be entitled. Denial of service DOS. Attacks on servers, <coughs> network devices, or network communication links. Physical security. An equally important vulnerability is the physical security of devices <coughs> An attacker can deny the use of network resources if those resources can be physically compromised. Some threats are hardware, environmental, electrical, maintenance. In the hardware, we have physical damage to the servers, routers, switches, cabling plants, or, and workstation. Uh, by mon mon monitoring and reporting uh, all kinds of failure, making sure it's in good conditions, and making sure nothing affects that, we can avoid any incidents. In the environmental threats, we have temperature, temperature extremes, too hot or too cold, humidity extremes, too wet or too dry. Uh, this is best controlled by having uh, our, our servers and equipment in a controlled environment, such as an enclosed room with, with, a, with an environment control.
electric in the electrical uh, thread, we have voltage spikes, insufficient supply, burnouts, unconditional power noise, and total power loss. Uh, the only way we can uh, protect uh, our, our equipment against this is to have our, our good installations or having a, a bunch of no brakes to protect them and making sure they have the correct voltage. In the maintenance uh, thread, uh, we have poor handling of key electrical components, lack of critical spare parts, poor cabling or poor leveling. Uh, this is uh, fixed by routine and extreme care with the, all the components. The vulnerabilities in the technology area. Network security weaknesses. TCP IP protocol weaknesses. Hypertext transfer protocols HTTP, file transfer protocols FTP, and internet control message protocols ICMP are inherently insecure. Simple network management protocols SNMP and simple mail transfer protocols are related to the inherently insecure structure upon which TCP was designed. Operating system, operating system weaknesses. Each operating system has security problems that must be addressed. Unix, Linux, Mac, Mac OS, Mac OS X, Windows Server 2012, Windows 7, Windows 8. All these are documented in the Computer Emergency Response Team, CERT, archives in their website. Network equipment weaknesses. Various types of network equipment, such as routers, firewalls, and switches, have security weakness that must be recognized and protected against. Their weakness include password protection, lack of authentication, routing protocols, and firewall holes. There are also vulnerabilities in the configuration, such as unsecure user accounts, system accounts with easily guessed password, misconfigured internet service, unsecure default settings with, within products, misconfigured network equipment. There are also policy vulnerabilities such as lack of written security policy, policy, politics, meaning political battles and turf wars can make it difficult to implement consistent security policy, lack of authentication continuity, poorly choosing easily crack or default password can allow unauthorized access to the network, logical access controls not apply, software and hardware installation and change do not follow policy. Unauthorized changes to the network topology or installation of unapproved application create security holes. Disaster recovery plan is non-existent. The lack of a disaster recovery plan allows chaos, panic, and confusion to occur when someone attacks the enterprise. Vulnerabilities and network attacks. A virus is a malicious software that is attached to another program to execute a particular unwanted function on the workstation. An example is a program that, uh, uh, that is attached to command.com, the primary interpreter for Windows system, and deletes certain files and inflects any other version of, of command.com that can, it can find. A Trojan horse is, a different, is different, only that the entire application was written to look like something else, when in fact, in fact it is an act attack tool. An example of a Trojan horse is a software application that runs a simple game of, on a workstation. While the user is occupied with the game, the Trojan horse, horse mails a copy of itself to every address in the user address book. The other user receives the game and plays it, thereby spreading the Trojan horse to the addresses in each address book. Worms are self-contained programs that attack a system and try to exploit a, sp a specific vulnerability in the target. Upon successful exploitation of the vulnerability, the worm copies its program from the attacking host to the newly exploited system and begins the cycle again. The worms uh, means several other things such as the enabled vulnerability. A worm installs itself by exploiting known vulnerabilities in the systems. Propaganda mechanism. After gaining access to a host, a worm copies itself to a host then selects a new target. Payloads. After a host is infected with a worm, the attacker has access to the host, often as a privileged user. Attackers could use a local exploit to scale their privileged level to administrator. Network attacks. Reconnaissance, reconnaissance attacks. The unauthorized discovery or mapping system service of or vulnerabilities. Access attacks. 
the unauthorized manipulation of data, system access, or user privilege, denial of service, the dis disabling of corruption of network systems or services, mitigating network attacks. Antivirus software can detect most viruses and many Trojan horse applications and prevent them from spending in the network. Antivirus software can be deployed at the user level and the network level. For worms attacks, containment, contain the spread of the worm within the network compartment compartmentalize uninfected parts of the network. Inoculation. Start patching all systems and, if possible, scanning for vulnerable systems. Quarantine. Track down each infected machine inside the network, disconnect, remove or block infected machines from the network. Treatment. Clean and patch each infected system. Some worms may require complete core system reinstallation to clean the system. There's, uh, there, there's a security me method called AAA, meaning authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication. Users and administrators must prove th that they are who they say they are. Authorization. After the user is authenticated, authorization service determines which resources the user can access and which operation the user is allowed to perform. Accounting. Accounting records that the user does, including with is access, the amount of time the resource is accesses, accessed, and any changes that were made. Another security method is securing the devices. Part of a network security is securing actual devices, including end devices and intermediate devices, such as network devices. There are some simple steps that should be taken that apply to most operating systems. Default usernames and passwords should be changed immediately. Access to systems resources should be restricted to the only individuals that are authorized to use those resources. Any unnecessary service and applications should be turned off and uninstalled when possible. Here we have some examples of good and bad passwords. People tend to create easy passwords so they, they are easier to remember, but this is, a highly risk, this is highly risky, especially when working with sensitive data or system configuration. As we can uh, see, uh, it's preferable not to use numbers, uh, you, you know, I mean, names, <coughs> uh, normal words, words, or uh, any any information of of a personal of personal uh, source, such as uh, birthday, birthdays or names. A strong power usually used by symbol, alphanumeric characters also chooses in a random, non-specific way. Securing devices. When implementing devices, it is important to follow all security guidelines set by the organization. This includes naming devices in a fashion that allows for easy documentation and tracking, but also maintains some form of security. Additional password security. Service password encryption prevents unauthorized individuals from being viewing password in plain text in the configuration file. To ensure that all configure, configured passwords are in a minimum of a specified length, use the security password mean length command in the global configuration mode. Here we have a, an example. There you can also use the login block block for 20 attempts, uh, or I mean number of attempts on time. So you can block uh, login attempts if there are more than fail that are allowed. Basic network performance, the ping command. Using the ping command is an effective way to test connectivity. The test is often preferred to as tested the protocol stack because the ping command moves from layer three to the OSI mo model layer two and then layer one. Ping uses the ICMP protocol to check for connectivity. IO iOS ping indicators. A ping issued from I iOS will yield one of several indications for each ICMP echo that was sent. The most common indicators are indicates the receipt of a ICMP protocol received dot indicates a time expired while waiting for an ICMP who reply message. You an ICMP unreachable message was received. There's also the ping extended. The Cisco iOS offers an extended mode of the ping command. This 
is entered by enter the pink privilege exit mode without destination IP address, meaning it it is uh, delivered to a, every single device on the network. Tracer, like pink command, trace commands are entered in the command line. Take an IP address as the argument. What the trace, tracer command do, does is not only it tests connectivity, but also it tests connectivity with each uh, step of the way. As we can see in example shown here, the trace result indicates that the failure that the failure is therefore in the internet work beyond the, the LAN, meaning only one connection was made and the other and the rest could not be received. A very useful command is the show command. There are very uh, popular uh, variations of, of the command. Uh, the most popular are running config, interfaces, ARP, IP root, protocols, version. Here we have an example of a Cisco internal operating system software using the show version, where it shows us the iOS version, the bootstrap version, the iOS image file, the model and CPU, the amount of RAM available, number of and type of number and type of interfaces, amount of NB RAM, and amount of flash. An another useful command is the IP config. This is used on the on the Windows command command prompt, and it shows uh, useful things such as the IP address, the subnet mask, and the file gateway. The ARP command enables the creation, editing, and display of mapping of physical addresses to known IPv4 addresses. To execute an ARP command at the command prompt of the host, enter ARP minus A. As shown in the figure, command list all devices currently in the ARP cache of the host, which includes IPv4 address, physical address, and the type of addressing static dynamic for each device. CDP neighbors like ping command. Oh, CDP provides the following information about each CDP neighbor's device: device identifiers, address list, port identifiers, capability list, and platforms. Routers, router and switch file system. In addition to implementing and securing a small network, it is also the job of the network administrator to manage configuration files. Managing the configuration files is important purpose of backup and retrieval in the event of device failure. The flash file system. Figure 2 lists the contents of the current default file system, which in this case is flash as was indicated by the asterisk preceding the list in the previous figure. There are several files located in the flash, but of the specific interest in the last listing, this name is currently Cisco IOS running a RAM. The NVRAM file system. To view the content of the NVRAM, you must change the current default file system using the cd change directory command as shown, as shown in the figure. The pwd command verifies that we are viewing the NVRAM directory. Backup configuration files. To backup the configuration, the configuration with text capture, meaning TerraTerm, configuration files can be saved archived to a text file using TerraTerm. As shown in the figure, the steps are Step 1. On the file menu, click log. Step 2. Choose the location to save the file. Dot file tera term will begin capturing text. After capturing the has been started, execu execute the show running config or show start config command in the privileged except prompt. Text display in the terminal window will be directed into a chosen file. When the capture is complete, select close in the tera term log window. View the file to verify that it was not corrupted. You can also back off configuration with TFTP, following a, a similar uh, kind of steps. Also, you can make a, a backup configuration with a USB flash drive. It is a great idea to use a show file system command to verify that USB drive is there and confirm the name. Next, use the copy run USB flash command to copy the configuration file to the USB drive. Be sure to use the name of the flash drive as indicated on the file system. 
The slash is optional, but indicates the root directory of the slash drive. The iOS will prompt for the file name. If the file name already exists on the flash drive, the router will prompt for overwrite. Thanks for watching.